Hi, this is Dr. John Bergsma from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville. And we have a fantastic conference coming up, a live streaming conference on Saturday, June the 13th in celebration of Corpus Christi Sunday, the solemnity and feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what a tremendous event. And as I said, we're celebrating this. Myself, uh, Dr. Hahn, uh, Mike Aquilina, we're going to be speaking from about 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, again, live streaming on Saturday, June 13th. And in preparation for that event, we're giving some little appetizers, as it were, some little hors d'oeuvres that we're serving up during the week uh, for the big meal. Okay. Good image uh, leading up to Corpus Christi for the big meal of teaching that we're going to have on Saturday morning. And as my little hors d'oeuvre for this event, uh, I'd like to talk with uh, all of you a little bit heart to heart about this sad division that exists between Catholics and non-Catholics, or really particularly Protestants, about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Now, Many of you know my story. You know that I am a convert from uh, the Calvinist tradition, uh, that I was a, a Calvinist pastor uh, up in Michigan for a number of years and then came into the Catholic Church during my years of study at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. And I've given my uh, conversion story and uh, even published this book, Stunned by Scripture, about how I came into the Catholic Church and one of the questions that I often get, particularly from students, and I think this is characteristic of, of most um, believing, practicing Catholics, is, is this kind of incomprehension um, about why it is that, um, that our separated brothers and sisters in Christ in various Protestant traditions have such an objection against the real presence when it is the literal meaning of Scripture. So this is a question that often comes up in class. We'll be, we'll be covering the Gospel of John. We'll go over John 6, and I'll point out uh, you know, the use of words there, how our Lord literally says, unless you munch my body, you know, using the Greek word trogo, uh, when we get around verse 53 and how graphic it is and, and this emphasis on eating uh, Christ's body and how it points to the Eucharist. And, of course, my students, um, not hearing, uh, you know, the, the objections that may be raised, uh, are very convinced by me, okay, because uh, I'm giving them this, this whole argument, of course, and, and, and my, you, know, you know, the arguments sound, you know, and I, oh, I hope it is convincing. But they're, they're convinced, and they raise their hand and say, well, well, Dr. Burks, how can people not believe this? I mean, what did, what did you think when you as a Protestant pastor read John 6? And that question, you know, always puts me a bit back in my heels because, uh, you know, I think back to my years as a Protestant pastor and as a devout uh, Protestant young person, etc. And I did read John 6 and I, I asked myself, why did it not get through to me? And basically, brothers and sisters, this is the issue. I was just part of a culture and part of a community that read the Bible in a certain way. And, and it was as if I had blinders on. I was unable to see it any other way than I was accustomed to. Okay, So, you know, brainwashing would be a, 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 a pejorative way to describe this. And I don't want to use that term because that implies that there is something Un, you know, uh, intentional and malevolent about this, and it wasn't that way at all. It was an unthinking, um, you know, communal way of interpreting Scripture, and we are all raised in that way, and we didn't think outside the box. It was a box within which we thought. So, uh, even into my my late twenties, when I was doing my doctoral program, and I began to encounter very devout Catholics who would who would talk to me about the Eucharist, they would share, me all the, share with me all these passages in Scripture and say, look, John, you know, all the institution narratives say simply it is his body. Look at John 6 saying, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. They'd share all these 
passages with me, and they would all shed off of my intellect like water off a duck's back, making no impression at all because every time I looked at those passages that they were pointing to, all I could see was metaphor, metaphor, metaphor. You know, they would say, well, it says it's his body. And I would think, yeah, well, elsewhere, Jesus likens himself to a rock, you know, and yet we don't think that he's granite. So, uh, you know, why should we think that this is literally flesh? You know, so this box of metaphorical thinking was impervious, all right? to all scripture verses that might be thrown at it. What really, what it really took to break open the box was to read something new, something that I was not familiar with, which was some of the earliest of the church fathers. 